Hi, and welcome to Ottawa Eats. So, do you have a brother? If you had a younger brother or older brother, or you were a brother, you probably did something to annoy your siblings, right? Yeah, you did. Well, if you do brother, and then beer, and then bistro, this is anything but annoying. This is amazing. This is Ottawa Eats. Hi and welcome to Ottawa Eats. I'm your host Tom Schock and this is the lovely Mario. You are lovely by the way. Hello, thank you. You are lovely as well. Oh, thank you. Oh, we started off the show with compliments. How nice. Uh, Brothers Bistro, what do you guys do here and why would people want to come to the market to come and visit you? Well, um, Brothers Beer Bistro. Ah. Mm. Uh, so we specialize in a lot of uh, craft, be uh, craft breweries mm -hmm. and uh, beers from uh, very local, uh, from the area. Um, I'd say Dominion City, uh, mm -hmm. very local. Um, even uh, some from Toronto, right. uh, Gravenhurst as well. Okay. Um, uh, Great Lakes from Toronto. Right. Um, and uh, can't top of my head right now. Again, all, all this too many. That's why, there's, too many a, that's why there's a beer menu. Right? Yes, there's a huge beer menu. Okay. Uh, the lists, uh, 16 beers on tap, always rotating, mm -hmm. uh, always uh, featuring the greatest yeah. the newest seasonal stuff seasonals you know. yes yeah. for sure always seasonal now you use your beer in a lot of the food do you not uh, there is uh, some beer that goes into the food yeah. um, a lot of the braises mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the braised meats that I do always have uh, some beer okay a lot of beer actually you look like a beer fan I do like beer <laughs> does it tell in the belly because that's where <coughs> it usually <No>. goes <laughs> no it was, it was in the eyes ah, in the eyes. I yeah. say beer and it glistens a little yeah, bit yeah, yeah a little tinkle in your eye absolutely <laughs> uh, tell us a little bit about yourself uh, what led you to here how did you get here well uh, brothers beer bistro has been um, kind of like a familiar fa uh, face in the market mm -hmm. uh, I used to work at social so and I used to live down the street on Rideau I would stop in a lot <laughs> uh, and uh, got to know the, the people who uh, who run the place and uh, they came to know my face and mm -hmm. I just we just fell in love yeah it was love at first sight it sounds like a was this a dating thing or was this like a it was me after work you were dating their food on the I side? I was dating their food on the side. <laughs> it's an affair that led uh, to a job. I like this. It did. Uh, yeah, I met Nick a while back, uh, and uh, he, offered me, he offered me a job yeah. as the chef, because uh, their previous chef, Chris Wiley, was, um, he left to go to back to the bank, uh, back to Empire. Okay. Uh, work at Gazelle Lake as a chef there. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, they needed someone, someone different. They were moving in a different direction. Right. And I was happen to be in the right place yeah. at the right time. You are different. <laughs> I will give you that. Thank you. I try to be different. Yeah. It's boring when you're always the same, you know? You're different. Embrace it. Do you want to embrace? I do. A hug right off the shirt. Uh, I like that. Oh, thank you. Oh. No, oh, hold it on oh, just a little. Okay. Yeah. Oh, there we go. <laughs> just a little too long to make it awkward. <laughs> no, no, of course. I do like the awkward. Usually I hug people at the end of the show and they've made amazing food, but we'll get it out of the way right away. Okay because you're different. Uh, if uh, people want to get something completely different from you, um, they're gonna come in here and they're gonna sample some of that food because it's your traditional ingredients probably, but with a bit of a different spin on it. If you had to describe it in one word, what is it? I'm gonna put you on the spot right there. One word to describe yeah. what I do? You can't use different because you already used that. <laughs> um. Easy, not easy? Is that one word? Can I it's use hyphenated, it? it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. All right, uh, so we're going to step into the kitchen uh, with the lovely Mario, and yes, I will ask him about the mustache brief in like short order, I'm, I'm sure. Can I just, just want to just touch it? It's very wispy. All right. <laughs> All right, welcome to uh, Ottawa Eats in the Kitchen with the lovely Mario, who has, as we've already noticed, the beautiful mustache. I can't help but gaze into it. I get lost in it. It's so wispy and lovely. <laughs> I appreciate that. Uh, how long did it take you to, to grow uh, that? A year. Yeah? A good solid year. It was very, uh, it was a trial, for sure. I mm -hmm. uh, wasn't sure if I was going to make go through with the whole process. It's, yeah. Uh, not, uh, I'm glad you persevered. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My mama said, don't be a quitter. So, you know, <laughs> when it comes to growing mustaches, yes, I guess. Yeah, well, yeah. Really. Yeah. Uh, so you, you've been here for uh, about a year and yeah, you're bringing your own kind of 
style to the kitchen here. So yeah. tell us a little bit about um, what we're going to be making first. What is this dish right here? Uh, well, we're here. Uh, I know it seems pretty simplistic, but yeah. it is our uh, is a new tuna dish that we have on the menu. Um, it is albacore tuna that's been uh, cured in tamari, which is a gluten-free soy sauce. Oh, okay. Uh, so mm. tamari, like same kind of cure for everything else, salt and sugar based, but instead of the salt, I'm putting the tamari. Now, is there a big taste difference between tamari and... Not really, no. No? no. You, can, you couldn't tell if you just put it in front of somebody? Not really. No? Uh, so how does this all come together? What's what's happening here? Uh, well, first, uh, I'm going to be slicing this tuna. So this tuna uh, was cured for 24 hours. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to cut a couple pieces off, three to be exact. Uh, it is about three ounces. If somebody wanted to cure tuna, how would they do that at, at home? Is there a way to do that? Is this a pretty simple process? Uh, it's pretty simple. Yeah. Um, could you do it at home? Yes, you could. Uh, yeah. As, uh, usually it's an equal parts sugar uh, and salt base mm -hmm. um, and as it sits it produces its own liquid that it sits in okay uh, and um, like 24 hours you kind of like shift it around every right. once in a while just so like all the sides of the tuna uh, can get um, coated in the sugar right so okay. it's uh, it's cooking it essentially on mm -hmm. the outside oh very nice uh, preparing it in that way so I also have a avocado puree mm -hmm. that has also been made with tamari um, instead of salt. Oh, okay. So it's going to come, come out a little bit more uh, darker. Right. I'm just going to pour some on and uh, just spread it across the plate just so it's... Um, very nice. Nice little pastel color, very yeah, rich. Yeah, it's very nice. Yeah. Uh, we're also going to be just going to lay down the tuna just ever so, present it. Mm-hmm. Is that something that you really enjoy about cooking, the presentation yeah, aspect of it? Yeah, the presentation it? is pretty important. Yeah? Um, you can just chuck it on a plate, here you go. Well, you can, uh, but I'd rather the people let let them do that, you know? Just mm -hmm. they, they can take it and just mess it all up and eat it that way if they want to. But uh, So we're just going to mandolin this a little bit. Careful with your fingers. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to cut it even finer. I want to make it look like uh, like a sea creature, essentially. Oh, okay. So the uh, the plate itself uh, reminds me of the the sea floor, the ocean floor. Oh, I so, see. Uh, it's so almost like that coral kind of look to yeah, it a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. Um, so this here we have is um, is uh, seaweed essentially. Um, wakame. It's been prepared with uh, uh, sesame oil and. Um, soy sauce, so not gluten-free, so I know mm -hmm. it kind of plays off, but I could leave it off the plate if necessary. Right. Um, uh, it's just prepared seaweed, very, very, it's got a little, I like crunch to it, mm -hmm. uh, some saltiness to the plate as far, to the dish as well, and I'm going to put that on. Uh, I'm going to put the sea creature on there as well. Uh, I'm going to add more of this beautiful sauce to the plate. Just extra dabbles. Uh, and I know gluten. <laughs> 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 I put so much gluten-free items on the plate and then finish off with bread. You are a walking contradiction. It's amazing. Uh, yeah. Just a little extra crunch. Of course, if people want a gluten-free, then you could yes. make a gluten-free. Uh, so three ingredients basically. Wow. The tuna. And it's got that really. I mean, usually you don't see something like tuna sliced fairly thin and then stood up on edge. Mm -hmm. But this is part of what makes it your dish, right? It's my dish, yeah. All right, there you go. So nice and simple, and this would be just an appetizer? Uh, it is uh, part of the small place. Oh, right. and you could share it with somebody if you, you like. If you really wanted to. Share it with Mario if you like. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're gonna do, uh, what's, what's the next thing we're gonna do? Uh, we can do the lamb dish. All right, so that's coming up next on Ottawa Eats. So this is dish number two. We're going to do a pastry here at the end of the show, but this is something that we would consider a main course. Yeah? Yes, it's one of the main courses. Okay, so is this one of your favorite meats to work with, or you just wanted to um, show off a little bit? No, or? it's it is one of my favorites. I uh, I personally love lamb. Uh, mm -hmm. When I first had it, I uh, I fell in love with it. My mom doesn't like it as much, so when I go home, my stepdad and I we kind of like. So eat what? All the lamb. So what's this one? What what's involved? Uh, in this? So this one is a it's a lamb saddle. So it's mm -hmm. it's uh it's the back of the of the lamb. It reminds me a lot of duck, like a duck breast. 
Okay. Uh, it has the same like same fat content, and mm. the meat is uh, right. Is, anyway, so this one might look a little bit differently because I had it cooked already uh, a sous vide, mm -hmm. so um, cooked in a bag under pressure, and okay. then it's cooked in a water uh, circulator water bath for four hours. To begin this dish, I uh, just make sure it's like well salted. Uh, get it into a really relatively hot pan. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna help it out with a little bit of a little more oil. Uh, and this is gonna this is gonna render down as a duck breast would. Um, the fat needs to be crispy. Uh, needs to be less fat on there because you don't want to eat. Fat, right. right. And uh, because of the four hour cooking process mm -hmm. in the circulating bath, it comes out pretty mid rare already. Okay. So I don't want to cook it longer than. Right. You don't want to make it into a, a leathery shoe, well, right? Exactly. Yeah. Right. Okay. I will usually use the same fat mm -hmm. from uh, the lamb to cook my veggies in. So it's uh, potatoes and beans. Wow, simple. Very simple. Yeah. Uh, so uh, we're just gonna help it out a little bit. Um, the beans and the potatoes have been cooked already. Mm -hmm. uh, just a little bit of water just to help it heat up a little bit faster. Mm -hmm. Always a little more salt. Mm -hmm. And at this moment, uh, it's pretty much warm through. Right. I'm just gonna finish with a little bit of uh, fresh herbs here. So like a little bit of parsley. And a touch of oil, uh, olive oil for a glaze, essentially. Just a touch, nothing crazy. Mm -hmm. So we're just gonna put it back into a bowl that we used earlier. The uh, person who does the dishes likes you when you do that. What's that? When they use, use the same bowl. It's yeah, nice. It's, yeah. it's good. Less cleanup. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and it was the same stuff that was in there, right? <laughs> uh, so we have uh, just some uh, some fresh basil that's going to go into this dish as well. It is um, just gives it that aromatics that we need. Mm -hmm. um, and we start plating. So the servers really, really hate this plate because it is uh, heavy. Right. It is very heavy. So actually. you have to have a little bit of muscle mass to serve yeah, here, I suppose. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, if you love going to the gym, please apply here. So we're just gonna put the the, the veggies on the plate with the, the nice herbs. I noticed I put the, the basil in pretty much at the end, only because basil does bruise very, very quickly. And I don't want it to be brown as it hits the plate. I still want it nice, nice green. You don't want it limp, you want it nice and crisp. Yeah, yeah. Right. So, Push it up on there. Very nice. Uh, so this sits as is moment. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to take the lamb that we had already prepared uh, and just warm it up. Mm -hmm. um, this is going to cook the flesh side. It's going to give the lamb a little bit more of a, like a little warmth. Right. right. I don't want it to be hot. I just want it to be just warm. Yeah, you don't want people to burn their mouth on exactly. it. Just yeah. And like I said, four hours cooking in the water bath. <laughs> yeah. You're gonna overdo it a little. It'll bit. overdo it. Yeah. yeah. Was this one of the more difficult types of cuts or, or meats that you struggled with at first when you were learning how to do yes. this? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, lamb is very temperamental. It really. Has, uh, it cooks. It takes a long time to cook, but once it cooks, it's overcooked in seconds. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. So you really got to watch it. It's yeah, not one of those just set it and forget it kind of things. Okay. Uh, so we're just gonna set that just a little bit there. Um, so what I have to finish the plate, I have a spiced, uh, spiced yogurt, mm -hmm. uh, Papa Dump spice, uh, which is uh, black pepper and cumin. Uh, just mixed in with the yogurt, and then I thicken it with uh, uh, what's it called? Chickpea powder. Wow. So it should be flour. Essentially. And this is something that you would have kind of come up with on your own. Uh, I had worked with something like this in the past, but. Uh, we actually used Papa Dom and then ground it up and really? put it into it. Yeah. Uh, and this is a raisin and olive puree, uh, as is what it is really. <laughs> Just raisin and olive puree together. It's no more complicated uh, than that. So, Sultana raisins and um, Niswa olive. Just to give it a little bit of salty, sweet. Can I taste that just a little bit? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Just right on the fingertip there. Oh wow! So it's got that distinct taste of the olive, but that nice sweetness yeah, too. Yeah, a little bit of sweetness. Very nice. So the lamb has been seared to a nice little 
crust on there. Mm -hmm. uh, so now it's just a bunch of, just to get to slice it. And this is very hot, but I'm pretending it's not. Oh. <laughs> uh, you're just gonna give it a little bit of slice here. It looks gorgeous. Uh, yeah, the color stayed really nicely. Like it's, it's cooked at perfection. If you would have set it for like an hour, mm -hmm. seared up like that. Anyway, so I'm just gonna lay it on Z on the bed. Wow. And then we're gonna finish it with the fresh cilantro I grabbed earlier, just for a little bit more color and a little bit of that. I don't know, it's cilantro. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, why not? I hear it's good for digestion. Is it? I have no idea. I just made that up. Uh, and then last but not least, so the lamb saddle comes with uh, bones. Mm -hmm. And I take the bones and make a stock and then reduce that stock. So it's just more lamb flavor. Wow. Uh, Mario, this looks incredible. This it really does. Plate. Just beautiful. What an amazing dish. Lamb, and you made it sound so simple, but yet it's quite an involved process. Yeah, there's, it's not that simple. <laughs> <laughs> but you made it sound simple. So. Uh, everything takes hours to cook. Now the the sauces themselves is that one of the the aspects of cooking that you really enjoy, or what's what's the what's the part of it that you really enjoy that you really like to get your hands into? Uh, sauces are yeah. number one, yeah. All right. Well, Again, everything else but the sauce is where it's at. It's like it's nice that you have the sauces. That's your favorite part. But this entire dish is just absolutely stunning. So there you go, Mario. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Wow, a real pro. That's impressive. <laughs> So what would an episode of Ottawa Eats be without, well, a pretty girl and dessert, mm -hmm. obviously, and that's what we're talking about. Mary, thank you so much for uh, joining us. Welcome. Um, is it Mary or Marie? Which, Mary's, either one? It's fine, either or. M-bomb? M-bomb, I like that. That's, that's good. That's not good. We'll just, we'll just go past that. Uh, <laughs> let's talk about the dessert that you're going to be putting together for us. So you're going to do two for us. Uh, what's the first one? Uh, the first one is a zucchini brownie. Okay. And it's me. I'm gonna serve it with one of our beer ice creams because oh. we make a lot of beer ice creams. Where you've already got me. Yeah, I'm already <laughs> hooked. Okay, so the the zucchini brownie. What is what makes it a zucchini brownie other than the obvious zucchini and brownie? Is that pretty much it? That's pretty much. What okay. It is. Yeah, I can't. <laughs> can't overcomplicate. Brownies it. with zucchini. <laughs> so instead of eggs, it's brownie as mm -hmm. a binding agent. So okay. There's no eggs. Right. There's no dairy. So. So if you're someone that doesn't like that kind of stuff, this is for you? Yeah. Okay, perfect. All right, so what's involved in putting this together? All right, so, um, I'll play it for you. Mm -hmm. So basically, a little bit of cinnamon sugar. Yeah. Just to add something on the plate. And then the brownie itself. Mm hmm It's nice. So, this ice cream. Beer ice cream, super yeah. delicious. It's a blueberry Moroccan ice cream. Oh. That one. And Beautiful here. color on that too. Yeah, no, I love the purple. And here, there we go. Have some zucchini chips, which those um, just like zucchini, coat them in sugar, dehydrate them for 24 hours, and really, that's what I've it never is. actually yeah. seen that before. No, no. And here I have a little bit of beet powder, just to give it color. So okay. what you do there, uh, dehydrate your beets, grind them up. You have a nice little powder, just. Is, is that one of the bigger things for if you're going to be doing pastries and baking that kind of thing dehydrated type of different colors and different materials? Well, I mean it helps. I mean yeah. you can buy them like already made but everything right. here is all made in-house. So okay and the brownie itself you make that in-house here as well. Yeah okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean the ice cream everything. Um, mm -hmm. Like for powder we have some it's like carrot powder and uh, orange powder mm -hmm. so pretty much anything. And then just a little chocolate garnish to add on to it. And I, I love putting microgreens on my dessert just because I find it adds. Really? It just adds a little something. And that's just, and like, you wouldn't ordinarily really see that on a dessert. No, I find it goes well together. It adds a little texture to it. So wow. that's what that one is. I love that. Nice and simple, straightforward, mm -hmm. but a little bit different at the same time. I don't think I've ever seen a zucchini chip on top of ice cream. No? No, that's well, a first. first for everything. Yay, a first mm -hmm. for me. Okay, and what's next? What's the, the next second dessert? The next one is a citrus creme brulee. Mm -hmm. So creme brulee, it's very classical. I come from a very classical training in my pastries, so 
I decided to bring that up here when right. I started working here. Why not? So Kimberly always caramelize the top because mm -hmm. you just gotta. That's it's the name. Of course. Right? And what's what makes this creme brulee a little bit different? You said uh, it's citrus. It's but citrus. So yeah. what I did, I uh, my recipe for creme brulee, I've been using it for a very long time. Mm -hmm. And um, basically, I just add different flavors to it every month. I change it, so it's different flavors. Right. This one is just like citrus rind, grind it up, mm -hmm. and I zest it. And so if you come here in, in November, you might get this or a little bit different. It's always something different. Right. Like last okay. month, it was coffee. Month before, it was vanilla. I had pumpkin. Do you get bored easily? No. Oh. No. <laughs> is that line of questioning? So I'm just stand here. Look Idiot. There. So just to garnish the plate with this one, this is a um, pistachio crumble. Mm -hmm. So just just to make it pretty. And these are coconuts. You can try it. Try it. Try a few of them. Oh, okay. It's very bitter. Very bitter. Very bitter. Yeah. Then why don't you make me take more? Because. That is bitter. I really, really want you to try the flavor. Yeah, that's. Yeah. The more you chew it, the more bitter it gets. Exactly. <laughs> why did you? I took too much. <laughs> you want more? <coughs> go. No, I'm good. You're good? Yeah. Yeah. So that's all on there. And for this one, I made a star anise gel, which goes huh? well with citrus. I'm still getting over the bitterness. Yeah. I'm a big baby. <laughs> so this one here. Just add a little something to the plate. Oh, very cool. Nice. And that's what that is to that. Now this recipe, mm -hmm. um, you said that you brought this, and you've been doing this recipe for quite some time. You brought this with you. Is this something that you came up with, or was it like passed down from somebody in the family, or uh, someone else you worked with? It's something I came up with. Um, I mean, every recipe comes from somewhere, so mm -hmm. I'll take the base and change it around, make it my own. Right. And then that's where I go from. And the sadistic side of you that makes people taste like bitter stuff when you don't tell them and they put it in their mouth. Where did that come from? Uh, I just like to be. Oh, okay. okay, well, good to know. Uh, so if you're coming down here for a beer and desserts, here are just a couple of the beautiful desserts, but they might just be a little bit different every time you come in as well, because, well, she doesn't get bored easily, but um, she just likes to mess with you, pretty much, right? Yeah. Is there something on my back? Did you put That's it for another episode of Ottawa Eats. Uh, thanks so much for joining us. And we have this beautiful array of colors and wonderful, simple ingredients that have been combined to create absolutely amazing dishes. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you. Uh, if people want to find you, where can they find you, both uh, physical location and web? Well, uh, here at the restaurant at 366 Dalhousie, we're in the corner of George and Dalhousie. Yeah, okay. Uh, in the market. Uh, yeah. It's very close to the actual Byward Market Street. All right. uh, Really close to Rideau, Se uh, Rideau Center. Yeah. So, um, so if you're coming down here, hanging out in the Byward Market, come yeah, here for, for, sure. for lunch or dinner. Um, yeah. And also online at uh, www.brothersbeerbistro.ca. All right. I like how you didn't mess up the name. That's, good. <laughs> That's excellent. You, that would have been embarrassing. Right? That would have been embarrassing. All right. So these are the the beautiful dishes. So I'm gonna I'm gonna sample this, even though it's been a, a couple of minutes, and you said it uh, should, should be, be fine. should be hot, but I'm gonna do this just because this looks so ridiculous. It's one of my favorites. Yeah, and I love this sauce. Mind you, I'm gonna take a little bite as well. Is that okay? Mm. What am I gonna do, say no to you? <laughs> and you have a great mustache. I can't say no to a great mustache. You can. No. Okay. No. Okay.